In this video, we'll guide you through the process of inspecting a ventilation shaft. These shafts are vital for miners' safety, as they need to be monitored for emergency preparedness and require much more energy if they are not in proper condition. There are typically two objectives in a ventilation shaft inspection, as they are not often inspected. Systematic overview. This type of inspection provides a broad view of the ventilation shaft's condition. You won't be searching for anything specific during the flight, but you want 100% coverage of the ventilation shaft. High accuracy 3D model with or without georeferencing. With a model like that, you will be able to compare the shape of the shaft year after year to detect any deformations. Regardless of your objective, there are risks when inspecting a ventilation shaft. The introductory video went over all the risks in a mine so we will go quickly on the one in a shaft. The first human risk would be to fall into the shaft. Make sure you are wearing the right safety equipment as you get close to the top of the shaft. If you fly from the bottom of the shaft, make sure the pilot is not in direct line with the shaft in case of falling rocks. Risk for the drone. The main risk is the airflow. By definition, a ventilation shaft will have airflow in it. It is important to limit this airflow as much as possible. You should also check before the flight the wind speed. This can be done with an anemometer on a stick. A good mitigation is to always fly with a headwind. This way, you make sure you can fly back in case of increased airflow. There is a small risk of falling rock in a ventilation shaft. Except for cleaning the top of the shaft, you can't do much to mitigate this risk. As ventilation shafts can be very long, there is a risk of losing the signal in them. Placing the range extender at the bottom or in the shaft will help the signal propagation. These shafts can also be very wet. Elios can sustain some water splashes but cannot fly under heavy water. This ventilation shaft is 120 meters high and was initially 180 centimeters large. There is a downdraft airflow so we will start from the bottom of the shaft flying up. This shaft has been fully inspected with Elios 3 last summer, so we didn't expect any issues. For this flight, we just want to get an overall overview of the shaft. We plan to fly all the way up, aiming the camera at the north side, and fly down aiming the camera at the south side. As the shaft is 120 meters high, it should take 92 seconds on the way up. 92 seconds on the way down and another 40 seconds to and back from the shaft so in theory four minutes and 44 seconds we might consume more batteries if the downdraft is strong but it should be okay as always let's start with short reconnaissance flights to evaluate the wind speed and to check if the rex is well placed after takeoff we fly close to the shaft entrance the drone stabilization is working hard to keep the drone steady. This is a sign that the wind is pretty powerful. The next step is to fly up the shaft, but after only 14 meters, the drone starts to struggle to gain altitude. This shows that even in an area that has already been inspected months before, the condition can change for unforeseen reasons. As we identified the airflow as a risk, we decided to fly with a headwind. It was easy to fly back. If we had started from the top of the shaft with a tailwind, we would have had no other choice than to try to fly down doing a one-way flight to land on the other side. The risk is high, but at this point, it would be the only option you have. If this shaft needs to be inspected now, then further preparations are needed. The mine ventilation team can help you to find ways to reduce or even stop the airflow. But this takes coordination between teams and preparation are needed before each inspection. 